Hey, what's going on everyone? So, uh, this is the watch this video for Monday, April 20th. Um, but before I go into that, I just want to share something um, that I've really noticed lately, right? Okay, so a lot of my neighbors, I'm relatively new to the neighborhood, keep in mind, but still a lot of my neighbors know that I'm a day trader, right? And I'm just astounded by how few people actually know what that means, right? Like yesterday, a guy, I, I'm out front grilling and he yells to me, um, I bet you love where the market is right now. And I, I'm assuming he means because it's beaten down, even though if you really, right, we're halfway back up from the highs. Anyway, you can see the chart there on the SPY. So it's really not that low anymore. If anything, if I was an investor, I would have loved it when it was just getting decimated, not after it's been climbing for a month. But anyway, I'm assuming he meant because you know everything's everything's uh, much lower priced right now, bargain, right, if you will. Um, and I try to explain to people, I'm not an investor, right? I, I log in every day in cash and I find intraday opportunities, make some money, guess what? If I want a day off, my neck's not out there, right? The market can do whatever it wants on my day off because I have no stocks. So it's like people just don't understand that. And then another, another neighbor says, so are you just guessing? It's like, I don't know. I just, maybe I've been doing this so long that it's just so second nature to me that I don't even know how to begin to explain to someone who, uh, who asks questions like, so you buy stocks when they're cheap? And the, you know what I mean? You get these, like some people just have no clue. And I'm not taking a shot at anybody. It's just, I would have thought more people would understand what day trading is because for one, it's such a great job, right? I mean, for years and years, I chased this occupation. I knew, I knew it was what I wanted to do. And I, I'm just astounded that so many people have no idea what it is that we do. Um, maybe that's a good thing, right? Maybe it's keep it, keep it our little secret. I don't know. Um, anyway, let's go into the watch list for Monday. Um, I'd be interested to, to hear some feedback if, if other people have encountered that too, or, if, you know, has anyone sat down and said, Hey, can you explain exactly, you know, I rarely get the, the detailed questions. Like, can you explain exactly what you do? And, and, um, I don't know. I would think I would. Anyway, let's see. Uh, so the SPY, as I just talked about, is just still grinding higher. Um, pretty narrow ranges on the day for the most part the last uh, week or so uh, in the SPY. Um, and I'll tell you what, I had trouble putting together a list today. Um, let me try that again. I, I can't find a lot of, you know, I like to, I like to focus on the recent high flyers and, and charts that look on the cusp of something, right? Um, so for me, it was uh, pretty tough. There's not a lot of standouts. Um, Gene, G-E-N-E, -E, um, had this massive 30 million share day, but look how far it closed off. It's, I mean, it was up over 280 and ended up closing at 230. Um, I don't love this because a lot of people from Friday are underwater, right? You know, mo most people hold in hope and so you look at this chart and say a lot of people are, uh, are underwater. Having said that, sometimes the next day we'll get, um, for the fifth, first 15 minutes, we'll get a narrow range and then uh, something like Gene will break to the upside and you can get a little mini short squeeze. So because I'm a day trader, I'm gonna have it on a chart. Um, another one here, Trip, I don't love this, but it had big volume three sessions ago, a couple inside days, both of them red though, but that actually makes me like it a little bit more if it does curl up and take out 20. You're going to have like two days worth of, of, of shorts that thought this was going to roll right back over that are going to have to cover. So that one is interesting to me, but only really if it breaks at least that two day high with some fervor. SGRY, I don't like to chase stocks, but this did have a nice volume day and a strong close. So maybe we get a quiet red to green or something like that. Um, EROS, massive volume. Uh, not a really strong close, but definitely deserves to be watched tomorrow. Um, Nautilus, NLS. This is extended from the moving averages, as are a couple of the others I just showed you. Um, but it's kind of interesting to me because, it, you know, it it, uh, it gapped down on Friday after the red day on Thursday. But then look at that strong close. This thing's been crazy strong for like a week. Um, I don't like trading stuff that's extended like this. In other words, like the 20 days all the way down here and it's trading up there. But it's resilient enough that I want to keep my eyes on it. Um, e C O R, nice gap up on Friday, and let's see, pretty good volume for that stock, and closed relatively close to its highs. And I I view this and say, hey, here's another potential catalyst right here, 
and had this big pop back here. So that's an interesting looking chart. BSGM is a fairly handsome chart. You have this nice pop, lower high, and you draw a trend line here, follow my mouse cursor. It broke that trend line, right, on Friday with decent volume, and you've still got a potential catalyst of 622 break up here um, this week. So I definitely want to keep this on watch. I have watched this thing trade though, and it's pretty thin and whippy, so you want to be careful with it. BLPH, a couple massive spikes, but got slapped back down. You had a nice gap up here about a week ago, topped out at 1429, came back down, kind of riding the eight day, but starting to curl back up. And this is a low float stock. So this one's interesting to me. Um, if we break through 14 on Monday with volume, again, I look at this and say, well, over 1429, this one might squeeze. So that one's on watch. A couple more, NEPT had this nice three-day move and it's really kind of flagging since then. Not in love with that, but we'll watch it. And I want to throw one oil play on watch. Um, so I chose Apache because the APA, because it was one of the better looking charts. They had this spike back here, came back down to the eight day and kind of turning back up. So that's kind of my chosen oil play of oil rallies um, because oil, I use USO to track oil, so beaten up here that one of these days it might get a short covering bounce. Who knows, right? But uh, I think uh, an oil play makes sense to have on watch. You could also have like a restaurant play. I, I usually look at EAT, um, <clears throat> a retailer like Kohl's or something. I just, I didn't want to throw something from every sector on watch because I try to really focus on stocks that are uh, recently in play. So that's my fairly small list going into Monday. We'll work together in the chat room in the pre-market and find some Decent gappers to watch as well. And I suspect we're going to catch some really nice trades again this week. I went out last week at highs for the year, as I most often do, uh, unless I have, um, you know, one of my two or three blunders that I average every year and, uh, you know, have a nasty day. But otherwise, um, the chat room's been really solid. Teamwork's been great. And uh, let's do it again on Monday.